praise the Lord, everybody. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Friendship House of Prayer. I am Pastor Cassandra. Let's go into praise and worship together because the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands.
Praise God. Shall we get ready for this sermon? Shall we pray? Precious God, again, we come thanking you, lifting up your holy name because you are worthy mm, to be praised. We thank you, Lord God, for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We thank you for being the way. Lord God, we come right now asking self to die down and move away so that you can stand up, Lord God, before your people and reign. We thank you. We love you. We glorify you. And Lord God, meet us in this hour. Give us what we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you are listening to me today, you are blessed by a man named Jesus. Whatever you may be going through in this season of your life, you are blessed by a man named Jesus. Regardless your situation, your circumstances, you are blessed by a man named Jesus. He woke you up this morning. You are blessed by a man named Jesus. And we want to talk today about a man named Jesus. Shall we read St. John's chapter 9 verses 1 through 11 and I'll read it in your hearing. And Jesus was walking along and he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Master, his disciple asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sin or his parents' sin? It was not because of his sin nor his parents' sin, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Shalom. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. His neighbors and others who knew him from the beginning when he was blind at birth, says, isn't this the man who was sat there in bed? Some said he was, others says, no, he just looked like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the same one. They said, who healed you? What happened? He told them, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go to the pool of Shalom and wash yourself. So I went and washed and now I can see. A man named Jesus. So Jesus was just walking alone with his disciples and they're asking this man been blind since birth. Was it because of his sin or his parents' sin? Now they wasn't asking out of disrespect, but they was asking because the Jewish culture, when you're suffering, it's usually because of unconfessed sin. So that's why they was asking, meaning no disrespect. Mind you, this man cannot see he cannot take care of himself. So all what he did was just sit on the side and beg everybody so they can take care of him because he could not take care of himself. So you understand and you can relate to the question. He's blind. What happened? Was it because of his sin or his parents' sin? We can relate to that. Because some things you went through, some things I went through, you hear family members, friends, and especially some of your sisters and brothers in Christ saying, what did she do? What did he do to deserve that? 
Because they're thinking, because even when sickness come against your body, their mind thinking, you must have done something. You must have said something. He must have done something. She must have done something. Contrary to the truth. God says here, I had to allow this suffering to take place through this man so that God can get the glory. So faith can be demonstrated. So a miracle can be seen by all. Watch this here. Jesus says this blind man, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't even his mother's, his parents' responsibility that this happened. This man could not work. He could not see. He could not do anything but sit on the side and beg to be taken care of. That's all that he was doing. He didn't ask for anything when Jesus was walking by. He didn't ask, can I, can, can you heal me? Can you, can you allow me to see? Can you touch, touch me? He didn't, he wasn't like the woman with the issue of blood. Can I just touch the hem of your garment? No, no, no. He wasn't like you and me when we fall down and we're begging God, please help touch this situation. Help us now. Lord, rain on this situation. Touch this circumstance. This man didn't ask for anything. At this time, he really didn't even know who Jesus was when he was walking by. So Jesus saw him. Jesus spat on the ground, made a mud of clay, put it on the man's eyes, and he told him to go. <laughs> he said, go. And the man went. He said, go. Washed in the pool of Shalom. So the man went. And when he came back, he was able to see. Now you think about this. Jesus just could have said, let there be sight. And he could have just seen at that moment. But Jesus allowed him to participate in this miracle. Just like sometimes he said, I need you to participate in the miracle that I'm getting ready to work out in your life. He said, you said you want a job? Okay, let me make it happen for you. But I need you to at least fill out an application. He said, you said you want to lose weight? <sighs> yes, it's me. He said, you said you want to lose weight? Then I need you to start eating healthy. And I need you to start eating right. And not eating like this. Not moving like this. But eating the right things that you put in your temple. He said, I need you to start moving. I need you to start walking. I need you to just start to work it out. And then when you do your part, I will work out a miracle in you. This man didn't ask for anything. Jesus said, I'm going to do what I do best. I specialize in miracle work. And so I'm just going to perform a miracle right here. So when the man came back and he was able to see and the people who he grew up with, who knew him, knew he was blind. They're talking, isn't that that man? Isn't that that beggar man sitting on the side? How is he able to see? What's happening? Is that him? Hey, no, it's just, it just looked like him. I don't think that's that man. I think it just looked like him. He said, yes, it's me. I'm the same one. I'm the same man. Once was blind, but now I see. So watch this. Here's the Jews. Watch this. Here they go. And this happened on the Sabbath day. Don't forget that. This happened on the Sabbath day. But watch this. Here's the Jews. They ask him. They want to know what happened. How did you see? How was your eyes made open? What happened here? He said, a man named Jesus told me to go. And I went. And when I came back, I was able to see. He said, go and wash in the pool of Shalom after he made clay and mud and put it on my eye. And when I came back, I was able to see. So the Jews not really believing him. They go to his parents. <laughs> they go to his parents and ask, is this your son who was blind at birth? How is he able to see? What happened here? The parents is like, well, that is our son. And he was blind at birth. But ask him. He'll tell you. He, he's old enough. He's of age. Ask him about it. 
Now, they was already afraid of the Jews. And that's how come they didn't want to get all involved because they're saying the Jews had already said, if anybody say this is the Christ or confess this man is the Christ talking about Jesus, then they're going to get put out the synagogue. They're going to get kicked out the temple. You are going to get kicked out the church. But this man wasn't afraid. He still stood up and said, a man named Jesus, he told me to go, gave specific instructions. He put some mud clay on my eye. He said, now go to the pool of Shalom and wash. And he went and he washed and he came back. And he said, and then I can see, I don't know nothing about this man. I don't know this or that. All I know, it was a man named Jesus who told me to go. <laughs> and I went. And when I came back, I was able to see. Once was blind, but now I see. How many of you have been blind, but now you able to see? What can you see? And what the man Jesus have done in your life? What miracle have Jesus worked in your life? He is a miracle working God. He is the God of all. He is the only God. What miracle have Jesus worked in your life? Because he specializes in mir working miracles. Jesus is the kings of kings. He's the lords of lords. Hallelujah, somebody. I, I, I'm just so excited because I think if Jesus can work that miracle, and this blind man, I, who didn't ask for anything? What would he give us when we're asking for things? He said, ask and it shall be given. But we have to be in the right position to receive what God is getting ready to pour down in our lives. We have to be in right standards. Our heart, remember, it has to be clean. He said, I want to get in your heart, but I can't get in there because uncleanness is in there unforgiveness is in there hatred is in there he said but I want to get in your heart I'm going to continue to knock at the table of your heart until you wash and allow that mess to flood from your heart so you can be free he said then I want to send you to the pool of Shalom and tell you to go and wash because so many of us are dirty and I'm not talking about our bodies dirty I'm talking about our vision what we think we see Jesus says that's not how I see it because your thoughts are not like my thoughts nor your ways like not like my ways he said I need to send you to the pool of Shalom and I need you to go wash and when you come back baby you're going to see. And the only thing you're going to see, oh, Lord, once was blind, but now I see. It's so many things that we praise and thank God for that we do see. But what about the things that we don't see that we should be praising God for? Like unseen danger, like that straight bullet that God made behave. Like when we in traffic, getting frustrated, trying to hurry up and roll rage. God said, I'm allowing this to happen because of what's up ahead of you that you don't see. Because you don't see the many blessings that I'm blessing you with. I'm protecting you when you don't even see it. When you sleep, I am covering you. It's because of me waking you up that I decided to breathe on you. Not that you deserve it. But because your, his mercy and his grace is constantly covering us. Every time we take one step, there's grace. Every time we take another step, there's mercy constantly covering us. Are we thanking God for that? A man named Jesus. Who's providing your mercy and grace? A man named Jesus. Who woke you up? A man <laughs> named Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Who hears you? A man Name Jesus, even in the midnight hour, who heals you? A man named Jesus. When you broken, who put you back together again? A man mm. named Jesus. A man 
name Jesus. This man, blind man, didn't ask for anything. And yet God gave him everything. Can we be like that? Can we just be standing there? Because God already know what we need before we even ask. God saw the need of this man. And he worked a miracle and blessed this man. And you represent yourself as that same blind man standing there in need. And God said, I'm going to bless you more abundantly. I'm going to give you what you didn't even ask for. I'm going to give you what you need. But we have to be in a position. We have to be in a position to receive the blessing from God. I like how his parents says, ask him. He old enough. He of age. Go ask him who healed him. And he came back with that word. He said, a man named Jesus told me to go. He sent me in Shalom, me, the pool of Shalom, me sent. So he was sent to the pool. He was sent to the pool. So who made the pool of Shalom? Hezekiah. Hezekiah built the pool. His workers worked and worked and worked. And they built an underground tunnel from a spring outside the city walls. And they did that to carry the water on the inside of the city and for the, for the people who wanted water so they wouldn't have to fear for their lives or fear of being attacked or threatened. You have to read the whole story. It's so, so much more to this story. And because it happened on a Sabbath day. And so you have to just read the whole chapter. It is a great, great, great story that will bless your hearts and it bless mine. We have to just understand how God operates. And he said, when you trust in a man named Jesus, everything it's going to be all right. He said, when it don't look good, trust in a man <laughs> named Jesus. Do you trust him? I mean, do you really trust him? When things are going bad, when things are not good, when things are looking dark and dim, do you trust him? You have to trust. We have to learn to trust the process. Jesus says you are in a processing chamber, especially during this pandemic. He says you are in a processing chamber. I am processing you. I am processing you. I am taking off hate and I am putting on love. He said you have to trust me. You need to trust me. If you want to get from A to Z, you can't do it alone. You have to trust me. Allow me to carry you. He says, let me leave. And pray you have an obedient spirit to follow him. He said, I am a miracle working God. I am the God that sits high and look low. I am the one that heals. I am the one that delivers. I am the one that sets you free. He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It's going to form, but it won't prosper. And who's going to protect you from that? A man named Jesus. I pray you receive something from this message. I pray that your heart is right with God. So when that day comes, he would say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. If your heart is not right, there is a hell. It's heaven or hell. And it's up to you. If you don't know God and departing of your sin, I say to you, if I were you, I would give my life to Christ. I would make him Lord of my life. I would say, Lord, I believe you. I believe in you. I believe that you have all power in your hand. And Lord, I want to make you ruler of my life. I love you. I adore you. And please, Lord, forgive me for my many sins. Help me to be more like you. Jesus will receive you. He specializes in receiving us. And we want to do better. We want to be a follower of Christ. 
just keep remembering who's the one that's blessing you? A man named Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. And let's continue to keep each other lifted up in prayer. Call someone today. Make a list and call somebody just to encourage them. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you really love them. We have to start seeing beyond people's fault and see their need. My God, I love you. And may God continue to cover, bless you, heal you, and protect you. In Jesus' name, amen, and be blessed. We partake in Holy Communion in remembrance of the body and blood of Jesus Christ that was broken and poured at Calvary for us. Jesus tells us in John 6 that if we don't eat of his body and drink of his blood, we have no life. In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same matter, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is my New Testament in the blood, in my blood. This ye do as often as you drink in remembrance of me. May God continue to bless us, protect us, and show us the way that we need to go. And may he give us an obedient spirit that we may follow him to the end of the earth. I'm reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whosoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. And that is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 33. Heavenly Father, we come again, Lord. Father, just to thank you. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, we thank you for watching over us last night, touching us with the finger of love, and starting us on our way. Father, we ask that you bless Friendship House of Prayer Baptist Church. Father, bless our pastor, Reverend Cassandra Ford. Heavenly Father, strengthen her and stand by her. Bless them in a mighty way. Father, we ask that you bless the front line of the viruses, Lord. Touch them, bless them in a mighty way. Father, go by the White House, Father. Touch them and bless them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless our nation, Lord. Strengthen us and stand by us. Father, help us to come together in love. Look down upon us, Heavenly Father. Strengthen us and stand by us. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Continue to bless Friendship House of Prayer. Continue to bless every member of the church. Father, bless all our sick and shut in. Bless the bereaved, Lord. Strengthen them, touch them in a mighty way. Father, these blessings I ask and pray in our Father's name. Amen. John 6 and 53 tells us, Jesus says, Unless we eat of his body and drink of his blood, we have no life. Therefore, we partake in the Lord's Supper in remembrance of him. The scripture says, he took the bread and break it. And he said, take, eat. Yep. 
This is my body in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, take, drink. This is the blood that I have shared for you. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come again, Lord Father, just to thank you. Father, we just thank you for watching over us, Father, while we slumber and slept. Father, we ask that you bless us, Lord, as we come to a close. Help us, strengthen us, and stand by us. Bless us, Father, as we prepare to go to our destination. These blessings we ask and pray in our Father's name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give Jesus the praise.